What does Jane Eyre teach readers about love and marriage? Let's look closely at key scenes in the novel and quotes from the characters to discover 10 lessons. In the course of the novel, Jane receives marriage proposals from two men, Mr. Rochester and St. John. Let us focus on the man she ultimately marries and see what we can learn about what love is and what love is not. Lesson number one, love is not possessive. Rochester tells Adele he wishes to have Jane all to himself and playfully says he will take Jane to the moon. Adele sensibly points out the folly of wishing to possess the one you love, telling Rochester that on the moon, Jane will have nothing to eat, you will starve her. And eventually, Adele concludes, Jane would be tired of living with only Mr. Rochester on the moon. Lesson number two, love is not blind. Case in point, Jane resists Rochester's attempts to dress her up in gowns and jewels to insist that she is beautiful. When Rochester says, I will make the world acknowledge you a beauty, I will attire my Jane in satin and lace. Jane replies, and then you won't know me, sir, and I shall not be your Jane Eyre any longer, but an ape in a harlequin's jacket, a jay in borrowed plumes. Jane wants Rochester to love her for her plain self. Lesson number three, love is not deceitful. Rochester tries to trick Jane into marrying him, but the church service he is exposed as a married man and Jane refuses to wed him. As Jane explains, Oh, never more could my love turn to him, for faith was blighted, confidence destroyed. Mr. Rochester was not to me what he had been, for he was not what I had thought him. Jane cannot love the man who tries to deceive her. Lesson number four, love should not be all-consuming. Jane recognizes the danger of living only for Mr. Rochester and letting her love for him consume her when she says, my future husband was becoming to me my whole world, and more than the world, almost my hope of heaven. He stood between me and every thought of religion, as an eclipse intervenes between man and the broad sun. I could not in those days see God for his creature, of whom I had made an idol. This love sounds almost like blasphemy. Lesson number five, love is between two equals. Most strikingly, Jane insists that she, although young, unworldly, and without family, is equal to the man she loves. Jane asserts to Rochester, I have as much soul as you and full as much heart. It is my spirit that addresses your spirit, just as if both had passed through the grave and we stood at God's feet, equal as we are. Lesson number six, love is like a force of nature. Rochester proposes to Jane outdoors as they sit under the old chestnut tree. Later that evening, the tree is struck by lightning and comes to symbolize Jane and Rochester's love. Jane addresses the wreck of the chestnut tree, saying, You did right to hold fast to each other. Each of you has a comrade to sympathize with in his decay, foreshadowing that even though Jane and Rochester will be separated, their bond is naturally strong. Lesson number seven, love must be sanctioned by society. This is important. Jane loves Rochester, yet she cannot be with him while he is married. Jane refuses to be Rochester's mistress, explaining, I will keep the law given by God, sanctioned by man. Lesson number eight, love is enduring. Jane confesses her love for Rochester and will continue to love him even when she believes he does not love her. I had learned to love Mr. Rochester. I could not unlove him now merely because I found that he ceased to notice me. Lesson number nine, love transcends all. When Jane prays to heaven, asking for a sign as to whether she should marry St. John, she hears Rochester calling to her. Later, she discovers that Rochester had called out her name at the exact same moment she heard his voice. This almost supernatural connection of their souls suggests the transcendence of love beyond body into spirit. And so, dear readers, our final lesson is that love leads to a happy marriage. As Jane and Rochester profess their love for each other at the end of the novel, Jane says, Choose then, sir, her who loves you best. And Rochester replies, I will at least choose her I love best. Jane, will you marry me? Jane's famous line, Reader, I married him, tells us that love, their love, leads to their happy union. <laughs>